Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to get started with this cute crochet jellyfish. Here's the packet and when you open it up it has everything inside that you're going to need to complete this project. It has all the different colors of yarn that you're going to need. It has a crochet hook and it has the, the stuffing that's going to go inside and it has this little needle that you're going to need to weave your yarn in when you're finished. And the final thing, and probably the most important thing, is this little um, booklet of instructions. So I'm going to kind of go through this with you really quickly today to help you get started. But um, you're going to want to have it have your copy close to you so you can look at it and um, check as you're crocheting. So hopefully between this booklet and my video instructions, we can get you to create your own jolly jellyfish. So let's look at page one. The first thing it's gonna to talk to us about is knots. And these are the, the crochet knots, the different types of knots. And it gives you all the, the pictures that help you, but I'm gonna show you how that works. So I think we'll just use this um, light blue really quick because it's the one that is has the most. So we're going to undo that. So the first thing you need to know how to do is make a slip knot. And the way I do it, I don't know if it makes it harder or easier, but I just put it around my two fingers and wrap it around. And then I pull this long thread that's hooked to my ball through the loop that I made around my fingers. Oops, let me try that again. So I wrap it around my two fingers, kind of, um, okay, let's see. So to make a slip knot, here's how I do it. I hold the end of the yarn in between my thumb and my two fingers, and then I wrap the yarn around and behind and cross it over the top of the end of the yarn. And then I push this the long part of the yarn that's hooked to the ball in through that loop that I made over my two fingers. You kind of have to keep a hold of that bottom part as you pull for a second so that it doesn't come undone. But then you have a slip knot. So that's how you start with your slip knot and then you put your crochet hook into that slip knot and pull it tight. All right, so the first stitch we need to learn is a chain stitch. So with your hook inside your slip knot, you're gonna hold on to your yarn and you put your crochet hook over the top of the yarn and wrap that yarn around it, around the hook, and then you just pull through the hole. So there's the hook on the chain, I mean the chain on the hook, wrap the yarn around my hook and then pull it through the chain. So that's how you do a chain. You just wrap around and pull through, wrap around and pull through. So chain stitch, the basis of pretty much every crochet project. Just keep wrapping around and pulling through. That's how we do a chain. So I'm going to go ahead and chain about 10 stitches or so just so that we have a little base. And you know what's cool about crocheting with yarn is that you can practice and then pull it out and practice and pull it out as much as you want because um, you can just reuse that same yarn. So I have a pretty decent size chain, just a couple inches long. That'll give us the the practice that we need. So in the book, the next couple of things I'm going to skip and I'm going to go to page, oh, their pages don't have numbers, but I'm going to go to step number nine, which is talking about how to do a single crochet. All right, so single crochet. When you see the abbreviation SC, that means you need to do a single crochet. And to do that, we are going to work into the chain that we've already made. So we never count the hook, uh, the loop that's on our hook. We're going to count, 
count one chain and skip that first one and go into the second chain from the hook. And I'm going to put my hook into that chain, into that one loop. So now I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to wrap the yarn around and I'm going to pull through just the first chain. So now I have two loops on my hook again and I'm going to yarn over, wrap the yarn around, yarn over, and then I'm going to pull through both of the loops on my chain. And now I only have one loop on my hook. So let's do that again. So I'm going to go to the next stitch in my chain. I'm going to put my hook through that stitch. I'm going to yarn over my hook and pull it through. So now I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over again and I'm going to pull through both loops. Okay, let's do it a couple more times. So I'll go to the next stitch in my chain. I'm going to push my hook through that first stitch. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull through. I'm going to yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, one more. Pushing my hook into the next stitch. I'm going to yarn over my hook and pull through one loop. Then I'm going to yarn over my hook again and pull through two loops. That is a single crochet and it looks like that. I'm going to go ahead and do a few more single crochets on my chain so that I have the foundation to show you the next kind of knot that I want to talk to you about. Okay, the next knots I want to talk to you about are the ones that are shown in um, image numbers, what is that, five and six, <laughs> and um, talk to you about those really quickly. And to do that, we kind of have to look at this um, this foundation of single crochets. So image number five talks about front loop only. When you're looking at your uh, your work, you'll see that they kind of go into little V's. So if it talks about working in the front loop only, you're going to be pushing your hook only through the loop that is closest to you. So if I was going to do a single crochet and it said front loop only, I'm going to push my hook just through that front hook, or I mean just through that front loop, and then yarn over and pull through one, and then yarn over again and pull through two. So that's a front loop only stitch. I'll show you that one more time. So I'm only going to push my, so I've got this V right here. I'm only going to push my hook through the front stitch, the one that's closest to my body. And then I'm going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, um, stitch number six talks about back loop only. So if I'm looking at my V in my work, the back loop is the loop that is farthest from my body. So if I'm going to work a single crochet in the back loop, I'm going to skip that first piece of yarn and I'm going to push my hook through the back part of the V, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. So one more time on the back, I'm looking at the V, I'm going to push my hook through the back piece of yarn, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Now if it doesn't say front loop or back loop only, then I'm just going to do a regular single crochet. All right, so a regular single crochet, if it doesn't say front loop or back loop, if it just says single crochet, I have my work. Here's my the top of it with my little V's. With a regular single crochet, I'm going to put my hook through both of the strands that make up that V. So now technically I have three loops on my hook right now, but this is a single crochet. So I push my hook through those two 
strands that make the V. I yarn over and pull through one. Well, it's really two. And then I yarn over again and pull through the two loops. So when I'm doing a single crochet, that V is going to act like one loop, even though there's two pieces of yarn. So pushing through the V, and then I yarn over and pull through one, and I yarn over and pull through two. So single crochet, if it just says single crochet, I'm pushing through both of the strands on the V, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. If it says front loop, I'm going to do that with just the strand closest to me. If it says back loop, I'm going to do that with just the strand farthest from me. So the last stitch we need to talk about is um, image number seven and eight, and it's called a slip stitch. Slip stitch. So in a slip stitch, we're going to insert our hook under both of the loops. So under the V, we're going to catch the yarn with our hook back here, and we're going to pull through both underneath our V and through the hook. So we only have one stitch. So let me show you that one again. A slip stitch. We're going to push our hook through both of the strands of our V. We're going to grab onto the yarn and pull through that and then keep going and pull straight through that one loop that we had. So a slip stitch one more time. Hook goes through both of the pieces of yarn in our V. Wrap around, grab onto that yarn, pull it through, and then continue to pull through the, the yarn on the hook. So there are a few more pictures in our booklet that explain some things, but we'll talk about those as we go. So when we're talking about round, it's when we are making our um, stitches go into a circle. Fastening off comes at the end when we're ready to finish up and it kind of gives us a little bit of information here about that. Oh, I skipped row. So a row is, you know, each of these lines of stitches that we're going to be creating as we do our project. And then down at the bottom, picture number 14 talks about weaving in because when you're finished, you're going to have these loose ends of yarn and that's going to tell us how to weave them back in. We don't need to know that right now, so we'll go over those as we work our pattern. All right, we are ready to start our Jolly Jellyfish and this is kind of fun. This gives us a list of all of the materials we need, which all of them are in your kit except for a pair of scissors. You're going to need that. And then it gives us a list of all the stitches that we're going to use. And we've practiced all of those. We have chain stitch, single crochet, slip stitch, slip stitch, back loop and front loop only. And oh. so then it gives us a list of all the stitches we're going to use. And we've practiced these. We're going to use chain stitching. We're going to do a single crochet, a slip stitch. We're going to work in the back loop only. And then... F-O, when we see that, means fasten off. So then it gives us a little bit more information, but we are ready to get started. And it tells us in step number one that we begin by chaining two using our pale blue yarn. So chain two with pale blue yarn. All right, here's my pale blue yarn. Remember, we have to make our loop, so if I pinch it, pinch the end between my thumb and finger, wrap the long part around my two fingers, then I can sort of make this um, loop and pull that long section of the yarn through so that I have my, my little knot ready to go, my slip knot. Okay, so all we have to do to begin is chain two. So we're going to wrap our yarn and chain one, wrap our yarn and chain two. That's it. Okay, now it says round one. We need to do six single crochets in the second stitch from the hook. 
So remember, we don't count what's on our hook and we don't count that first V. So really, if you if I look at mine, I kind of see three Vs. We're working into that middle V. So a six single crochets all into that one spot. So push in my hook, wrap around, pull through one loop, wrap around, pull through two loops. Okay, I'm going to push my hooks back in the exact same spot, wrap around, pull through one, wrap around, pull through two, that's two stitches. Putting my hook back in that exact same hole, here comes stitch three, I wrap around, pull through one, wrap around, pull through two, keep going, in, wrap around, pull through one, wrap around, pull through two, that was four. Here comes stitch five, and one more. Okay, there's stitch six, six single crochets. Now step two says that we're gonna work two single crochets in each stitch around. So we have six stitches we're gonna work um, two single crochets in each stitch. So there's where I started and you can tell because you have your little tail. So we're not going to count. Let's see if I can get that. So here's that's where our first stitch is going to go, where that tail is. We've kind of got like a little space there. So we're going to work a, two single crochets in each stitch. The first stitch starts right after that knot where we began. We're going to push through both of the yarn pieces on the V. We're going to wrap around, pull through one, wrap around, pull through two, go through that exact same hole, wrap around, pull through. Okay, there were my two single crochets there. Now I need to find my next V. Push my hook through that. There's one. Find it the same exact hole. There's two. Okay, next V. Push in my hook. Make sure you get both pieces of yarn. There we go. Wrap around, pull through. Wrap around, pull through two. Find the same hole, this is stitch two. Wrap around, pull through once, wrap around, pull through two. So I'm just gonna keep going until I've gone through all six of those single crochets we made. Okay, so I just did my last stitch and to make sure that I did it correctly, I'm gonna count my stitches. So the way I'm gonna do that is pull my loop a little bit bigger so that it doesn't come undone on me. And I'm gonna count my Vs around my circle. So I should have 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I have 12 V's around my circle. That's how I know that I have all the stitches I need for round two. So now round three tells us that we are going to single crochet in the first stitch and then work two single crochets in the second stitch and repeat that around as we go. So that at the end, we'll have 18 total stitches. So remember, we're working into the V's. So in the first V, make sure you go through both pieces of yarn. Grab your yarn, pull through one, wrap around, pull through two. That was my first stitch in my, my one stitch. That was my single crochet in the first stitch. Now I need to do two single crochets in the next V. If it takes you a minute to make sure you have all the right yarn on your hook, that's okay. You need to make sure you have two pieces of yarn 
on your hook, then you wrap around, pull through those, then wrap around, pull through those two. Now we're going through the exact same hole that we just came through to do a second single crochet. Now here comes one single crochet in the next V. Now we'll do two single crochets. So we're just going back and forth, one and then two, and then one and then two. And we just keep doing that all the way around until we get back to the end, or where we, until we get back to the part of the circle we started on. All right, so I think I'm finished with my 18 stitches. So I'm gonna pull out my loop a little bit and count my Vs. So you can move it to wherever is easiest for you to see but, and count your Vs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, we're on a scan. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven,
fasten off. So it's time to fasten off. That's exciting because it means that we're finished with the base of our jellyfish. So to fasten off, if you want to get back and look at your book, it's um, at the first of the booklet. This is number 13. So all we're going to do is grab onto our yarn and pull it through that stitch. And once we cut it, we just make our little loop and make a knot so it can't come out. So there we go. We've fastened off and we have the base of our jellyfish. All right. So step number six tells us Okay, so step number six tells us that to make the jellyfish head, we're going to use that same pale blue yarn. We're gonna do exactly what we just did to make the base, only this time, once we get to that 30 step, we're gonna go rounds six through 11, so six rows of just single crochets. So it's gonna be a little bit bigger this time. So let's pause the video and go ahead and Start again with step one, and you're going to do your chain two, and then you're going to work around. You're going to make your little circle. When you get to row um, five, round five, then you're going to not fasten off, but go on to six through 11. Okay, so I just finished doing step six of my um, jellyfish. And in step six, it talks about how we repeat steps one through five, which is what we did for the, the top. And then we continue around six different rounds of 30 single crochets. So let me show you a couple of things that I noticed. So number one, I noticed that the easiest thing was for me to count the stitches as I went. So I would just count as I stitched until I got to 30, and then I knew I was starting over again, and I'd count again. So to keep track of that, what I did was every time I got to 30 stitches, I put a little tick mark, and so then I knew when I had done my six rows. I just did 30 stitches, tick mark, 30 more stitches, tick mark. Since it just goes around and around, it was kind of tricky, so I didn't want to lose my place. Now the instructions tell us that we're going to need this yarn to stitch the body and the head together later on. So for now, we're going to just leave it. We're not going to cut it. We're not fastening off. So uh, just leave it loose with the with the long yarn, and we'll be back. We'll be back with this later. So now um, it says that we're on step seven. Step seven is when we're going to make the jellyfish's eyes, and it's pretty close to the same way we made our um, base and our little jellyfish head. But this time we're going to be using the black yarn. Okay, I have my yarn ready. So I'm going to go ahead and tie my little slip knot. Stick my hook in there. And chain two. There's one, two. And now it says six single crochets in the second chain from the hook. That's going to be the center spot of my little chain. So oops, let me make sure it's it's always a good idea to make sure you take your time and get the exact space you need. So I'm gonna yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, that's one stitch. Two stitches. Okay, so I have my six single crochets in my one stitch, and now it tells me to slip stitch. So I'm gonna go back to that very first single crochet and stick my needle through the top two. This is tricky, but again, take your time, get it right. 
And then you just pull through and have one stitch on your, one <laughs> loop on your needle, on your hook. And then we're gonna fasten off by pulling through. And I'm just gonna trim this and keep pulling through that loop. And there we go, we have our first eyeball. And we're gonna do the same thing so that we can get a second eyeball. Okay, now we're on step eight. We're ready to make a cute little jellyfish face. And it tells us that we're going to actually turn our work and just sort of, and it tells us that we're actually gonna kind of flip this right side out, inside out, whatever. And we're going to need our little, we're gonna need our little tapestry needle that came in your kit and we're going to need the eyeballs. So we've got these long strings left on our eyeballs and we're going to use those strings to attach the eyes to our jellyfish head. So we just thread the needle with the yarn and then you're going to want to kind of like put this eyeball maybe halfway between the top and the bottom of your eye of your head and you're going to want to take small stitches but make sure you get a good solid hold on that yarn and pull it through and then this time when i go back through i'm going to catch some of the blue yarn and some of the black yarn to attach it so blue and black. Okay, I'm going to do one more stitch. This time I'm going to finish up in the back. And I'm going to tie it into a little knot. So I'm going to grab one more little chunk of the black yarn underneath, pull it through, okay, now that's on there pretty sturdy, so I'm going to go ahead and trim off this extra black yarn. And I'm going to do the same with my other eyeball. Now I have my two eyeballs on. I'm going to next add a little smile <laughs> using my uh, last of my black thread and my needle. So I'm going to start from the back so that my long ends are back there. So I'm going to tie a little knot at the end of my thread and the end of my yarn. And actually it's going to be kind of a big knot. So I just tied, I'm going to tie a knot on the end of my yarn and I did three knots so that it wouldn't come through my stitches. I'm going to start from the back of my jellyfish. Oops, it came through. So I'm going to kind of figure where I'm going to begin. And I'm going to turn that over. Pick up some of the yarn back here. Okay, now that's on there pretty good and tight. So now when I come through, I can just start sewing my little smile. And you can take big stitches, small stitches, you can make your smile big, 
little whatever you want your mouth to look like. Totally fine. It's your jellyfish. So you're happy with what your smile looks like, you're going to flip back over to the back and just kind of tie off back here. I'm catching some of the yarn back here, but I'm not letting my black thread show through right now. So I'm going to just catch a little bit enough to uh, give myself a loop to tie off and trim. has a smile. So the last step on his face is to use some of the white yarn to make uh, little, uh, little dots in his eyeballs. So we're going to just take this yarn, we're going to tie a couple of double knots and stitch those onto the eyeball. Alright, so I'm going to be able to use this yarn um, and keep my ends pretty long so I'm just going to cut it in half because I've got two two pieces and I need two little eyeballs. So uh, once I've cut it in half I'm going to tie a double knot kind of in the center of my length of yarn. Okay so I have a knot and I have threaded my needle and now I'm just going to come through the front kind of pick where I want my little dot to be. And there it is on that side. Now I'm going to thread my needle back through on the other long piece of yarn that's on the front. And I'm going to pop this end of the yarn through. Now that I've got it on the back side, I can just tie it and there we go. I'm trim it. I'm going to do the same thing for the other eyeball. Okay, now we're on step nine, and it tells us that we're going to put the base and the head together, and we're going to make sure that the right sides are facing out, and then we're going to go back to that loop that we left long on the jellyfish head, and we're going to grab our crochet hook, and we're going to start inserting because we had 30 stitches around the head and 30 stitches around the base. So we're going to single crochet those two together. And then it says right here, back loop only. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I've got my two pieces. I flipped over my base. I crocheted it like that, but I'm flipping it like this. I've got my hook ready to go here. And now I'm going to remember it's back loop only. So I'm going to start at this right after I've tied off. So I'm going to hit the back loop, which is the loop farthest from me. Okay, so I'm going to yarn over first. I'm going to hit that 
back loop, which is the farthest loop for me. It's going to take a little trick to get it started, but once we get started, it'll go pretty easily. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so I'm going to start in this first stitch after where I tied off and it says back loop only. So I'm going to put my hook through just this back loop and it's a little bit of a trick to get started but once we get going it'll be all right. Then I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to pull through one and I'm going to yarn over and pull through two. There's our single crochet. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my hook in the back loop, farthest from me. I'm going to yarn, oops, hold on, hold on. Okay. So as I'm going around, I'm going to make sure I'm catching the back loop of the base and the back loop of the head. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through. And even though I have three loops on my hook right now, remember these two are acting as one stitch. So when I yarn over and pull through, I'm going to pull through those first two and then yarn over and pull through the last two. Okay, let's do it again. So the back loop only of my base, the back loop only of my jellyfish head. I'm going to yarn over, pull through that first two loops, then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. We're just going to keep going around. Back loop only of the base, back loop only of the head, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. All right, I'm going to go till I'm halfway finished and then we're going to stuff this thing. So my best tip in sewing these two together is make sure you're doing it slow and steady. This is not a time to try to hustle through. It's a time to make sure that you're getting every stitch and that you're always going through the back loop. So now that I have just a little bit left, it's time to stuff. And we have some stuffing that came in our kit. So we're just going to take it a little bit at a time and shove it in. In the instructions, it says to be careful not to overstuff it because then the stitches will pull and you'll be able to see the stuffing through the stitches. So we're going to stuff it, but not overstuff it. So I have mine stuffed and I use just a little bit over half of the stuffing that was in the package. Uh, I just didn't want it to be too tight. So I just wanted it to be stuffed enough. And now I'm going to continue grabbing um, those back loops and sew up, finish sewing up the hole. All right, so I'm getting all the way around to the last stitch. And one piece of advice is to take it very slowly because I could not rush this. I had to be super careful to catch every stitch in just the right place. So this is my last single crochet. And now it's time to fasten off. So after I've done that last stitch, I'm just going to trim off my yarn. Pull it through, and there we go. My little jellyfish is all stitched together. And now we're ready to make some tentacles. So we're on step 10. We're almost done because guess what? 13 is the end. We're getting so close. So just 
to uh, make the jellyfish tentacles, we're going to cut that royal blue yarn in half and tie a slip knot halfway along one of the lengths of the royal blue yarn. Then we're going to chain 50 with both the tail and the working yarn together. So let me get my hook ready and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so now we're going to be working with this dark blue yarn. And honestly, the hardest part was getting the knots out of it. So I got all the knots out and then it says to cut it in half. So I took the two ends and put them together and found the center and just gave it a little snip. So now this or that I have in my hand now is half of the blue yarn. Now that we have our two dark blue strands ready to go, we're gonna use the, one of them to measure what's left of the light blue yarn and do kind of the same thing to split it in half and get it ready to chain 50 as well. And I've folded that in half doing the same thing, matching those ends together. And now I've got the center marked right here. So it tells us that we're going to make a slip knot to get ready to um, work through our crochet, but we're gonna make it in the middle of the yarn. So I'm gonna take that loop right there and I'm just gonna flip it over so I make an X. And then I'm going to take the bottom strand of the X and push it up through the loop that I made. And now I have a slip knot right here. So I can grab my hook and get it ready. Okay, so it tells us in the instructions that we are going to um, chain 50 with both of these pieces of yarn. So it sounds complicated. It says, um, chain 50 with both tail and working yarn together. Don't let that stretch out. It just means that you're going to use both of these strands of yarn as you do your chain. And if you remember, you're chaining just pulling through that one loop. So there was one, wrap around, pull through for two, wrap around, pull through for three. So you're just going to keep doing that until you get to 50 chains, 50 chains. And um, it says in the instructions that they're naturally going to spiral as we start to crochet these. So um, expect that and I'll meet you back after we've done our 50 chains. Okay, I just made it to my 50 chains and you can see it's curly just like the instructions that it would be. And now it's time to fasten off. So I'm just gonna pull this whole long string of yarn through and give it a little tug. I'm not gonna trim it yet. I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. And I'm gonna grab my other half of the blue yarn and do the exact same thing and chain another 50. Okay, I have two dark blue tentacles chained and now I'm gonna take the light blue yarn and do the exact same thing. So 50 chains in the light blue yarn. All right, step 12 tells us that we're going to position the tentacles in the center of the jellyfish base and using those long tail threads and the the tapestry needle. We're going to sew them into place and then trim the tail threads and form the little tentacles. So the first thing I'm going to do is get all of my 50 chains and I'm going to kind of like hold them where the, the unchained yarn is where I fastened off. I'm going to keep them all kind of close together right there. And I'm going to sort of measure how long the chain is and how long this yarn is. I have so much extra. So I'm going to trim off a little bit right now. But remember, I'm going to use this to um, tie it in. So I don't want to trim it perfectly the same as my chains. I want to make sure I have enough left over. So I'm going to leave, what is that, like six, eight inches and I'm going to trim it off there. 
so you can see I just trimmed a little bit of the the ends off but just to make it a little bit easier to work with so now <clears throat> I'm going to uh, grab one tentacle doesn't really matter which one I start with because we're gonna just kind of do these as we go and I'm gonna take one of the the sides of the yarn and thread it through my needle And then I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to the very bottom of my um, jellyfish base, and I'm gonna pull it through. Okay, that's pulled through. So now I'm just gonna tie that like I'm tying my shoe. Got my two ends. I'm gonna tie it into a little knot. Okay, there's one. I'm gonna do the same thing with my other two. So, grabbing my second dark blue tentacle, gonna grab the end of one side of the loose yarn, thread it through my needle, and kind of pick a spot. And I'm going to, I'm gonna pick this spot sort of directly across from the other blue one. I need to pick up, you know, quite a few threads of quite a few uh, strands of that yarn. And I'm gonna pull it through, pull my needle out, and I'm gonna find the end and tie it together like a shoelace. Make sure you get a double knot so it's nice and tight and it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, and I'm going to do the same with my last little um, light blue tentacle and I'll meet you back here. All right, I just tied on my third and final, final tentacle. So now what I'm gonna do is kind of see where the ends of my chains fall and then just sort of trim this extra long um, loose yarn so that uh, I can have it, you know, I don't want it, I don't want the loose yarn hanging way down past where the other tentacles are. So I trim that. And now loose yarn, my chained tentacles and my loose yarn kind of all end similar spaces. They don't need to be perfectly straight across. So a couple of things that we need to do to finish up and we'll be done. The first is this little piece of yarn that is hanging out of my stitched together jellyfish head. I'm just gonna take my needle and thread it through. And then I'm gonna kind of weave this, and it gets tricky when it's just a little short piece, but you wanna sort of weave it back into the stitches a little bit. So that it doesn't show. And now that it's weaved in, I can go ahead and trim it and not worry about that not coming undone. All right, so that took care of that. And then the last thing we need to do is give him a little hanger. So I'm going to get a piece of the light blue yarn and I'm going to thread it through my needle. And then I'm going to go right through the center of his little head. I want to make sure that that loose piece of yarn is under my needle, not over top, because I want it to stay inside because there's that little loose piece where we began. Once I get that under my needle, I can just pull through. And I'm gonna make a little loop at the top to hang him, if I wanted to hang up my little jellyfish. So um, I trimmed off a little piece. I'm just gonna tie it in a knot right here. And now, my jellyfish can hang up. Guys, look how cute my little jellyfish turned out to be. I can hang him up on with this little hook.
and he's so cute. Now don't panic if your jellyfish looks a little bit different from mine, totally fine because everybody's is going to have their own unique characteristics. I'm so proud of you for sticking through and getting that project completed. I would love to see your finished project. Good job.